Binance uh, saying a cross chain bridge linking with its BNB chain uh, was targeted, enabling hackers to move tokens off the network in total. Hackers withdrew uh, 2 million tokens, about $570 million at current prices. Joining us now is Chang Ping Zhao. He is Binance CEO. The hack uh, comes as uh, Binance launches a new program aimed at training law enforcement and prosecutors to fight against cyber crimes. Uh, CZ, it's good to see you. It's a, the, what we have seen hacked, and this was, what, a half a billion, two billion total. It's always when uh, crypto is moving from from one chain, one blockchain to another? Is that when it happens in a cross-chain bridge? What needs to be done? Um, yes, so that is what happens uh, uh, for a cross-chain bridge. And um, what has to be done, I think, you no, know, the industry, as an industry, we just gotta learn how to uh, learn from this kind of mistakes and make our code more secure. But uh, software code is never bug free. So, but in the blockchain world, whenever there's a bug, you could be resulting in very large losses. Uh, this is one of the cases that happened. But we were able to minimize quite a, quite a lot of the uh, damage to less than 100 million now. I mean, we, we usually think of the blockchain itself as being almost fortress-like. So, and that's why with confidence, you're able to say that everything else is safe in terms of the the actual network, the, the BNB network itself, has not has never been uh, hacked. Yes, in this case, the BNB blockchain itself has not been hacked. It, this is the cross-chain bridge that sits between two blockchains um, that uh, allows users to change from one token to another. As you have said, we have seen many of this type of exploits in the industry uh, in the, this year, last year, but. Um, uh, every bridge is a little bit different, so we're still um, there are still new exploits that that's being found. But the blockchain itself is um, has no problems. And, and how often, in the course of, of the business, and, and you know your BNB, the coin is being used in, in a lot of different ways now. How often is a cross chain bridge necessary in the normal course of, of Binance doing business? Um, I think it is used almost like, absolutely every day by people. Um, so people do have the need to convert from one blockchain to another for various reasons. So um, the cross-chain bridge is an open, so a open source smart contract that just sits on the blockchain that facilitates those transactions. So, um, but once in a while, people do find vulnerabilities. In this case, it, it happened. I mean, it's just, you know, your BNB has a, a what, what your market cap must be $45, $50 billion in, in just BNB. So I understand a half a billion, but a half a billion is a half a billion dollars. So this is something that obviously it, some remedies are, are called for. Who, who, would, who would provide you with that? Can you do it yourself, the code? So the uh, the software developers, are, the code is written by a group of software developers for the blockchain, which is um, which is what we call the community developers or core developers. Um, and um, the nodes uh, that uh, maintain this network, there are there there's like 26 or 44 nodes, depending on how uh, uh, or what you what you count, and they need to vote to do the upgrade themselves. So they collectively maintain the network, and when there's a new software version, um, they will uh, they will vote for it. Um, and last night, there's a couple of emergency upgrades that was done. And I think over the next couple of days, there will be a few more upgrades uh, to be done. And there's also a few more votes regarding how uh, the hacked funds should be handled uh, will be voted by the community. CZ, one of the uh, like catch-22s is that anonymity is, is part of the, one of the attractions for, for a lot of crypto. How can you, um, how can you, law, how can you bring in law enforcement, prosecutors, and give them the, the tools uh, to be effective in guarding against something like this, and then at the same time maintain the anonymity that, that some people find so attractive. How do you walk that line? Yeah, so to be honest, blockchain is pseudo-anonymous, uh, meaning that uh, we can see all the transactions on the blockchain. And uh, we, um, there's blockchain analysis software or firms that are, that are specializing in analyzing this data, and the, they're quite good. And also with large centralized exchanges, we can correlate quite a, num quite, quite a number of address spaces with certain KYC information, link linkages, et cetera. So when you combine those kind of information together, 
you can triangulate quite a lot of what likely who likely are holding which cryptocurrencies, etc. Uh, and for law enforcement, if you track through this um, large amounts of information, you can trace it through. So uh, in most cases, so it's not. 100% guaranteed, so it's not a completely anonymous. Um, that's part of the design for uh, for the blockchain we have today, and um, uh, but it's also somewhat. It's not a, also not 100% traceable, but it can be traceable to a fairly large degree.